Welcome to Career Insights. The Career Insights series features local industry professionals engaged in conversation with students and recent graduates about career planning and job opportunities in Polk County, Florida. The next presenter is Sergeant Falgren. I'm Sergeant George Falgren. I'm the Advanced Specialized Coordinator here at the Academy. Um, we run our academy uh, similar to what Mr. Davis was just talking about. It's paramilitary structured in law enforcement. So our academy is structured on that same level um, to prepare you to be in the workforce. Uh, we have a daytime academy available. Um, law enforcement academy is 770 hours. So that's around six months long if you're going in the daytime. We also offer a nighttime academy. It's four hours a night. Uh, some Saturdays, you may have two Saturdays a month that you have to come out for eight to five on those Saturdays. That one is uh, helpful for those people that are working full-time jobs and uh, they go to the academy at night. Um, that one is nine months long, uh, so a little longer, but uh, you get the same material. Most of the instruction you receive in the Law Enforcement Academy um, will be given here at the Center for Public Safety. We have uh, two off-site training uh, evolutions that will occur at Polk County Sheriff's Office training range, and that's firearms and vehicle operations. Uh, the process for you to get into the academy, you would need to go through our selection center coordinator. Uh, Mr. Tommy Holland does all of the uh, processing and applications with recruits. Um, once you apply uh, with Mr. Holland, uh, he will interview you. Uh, your application will be uh, used as part of your screening, your background in order to get into the academy. And you will have to also uh, take a polygraph test in order to uh, get into the academy here. Uh, we are one of a handful of accredited, nationally accredited law enforcement academies in the state of Florida. Uh, we have a very high standard and we maintain that. We try to get the best to come through here so we can provide the best for our community. All of this information is also available on the website. If you go to Polk uh, State College's website and just type in Law Enforcement Academy in the search bar, um, all of the, there's a link for Pearson View, which will be one of the first steps that you, you'll need to take in order to get into the academy is take the criminal justice uh, basic assessment test for you to get in. Um, all the information for taking that exam is on the website. There are costs associated with the academy in order to uh, attend here. We have, uh, if you are sponsored by an agency, an agency hires you and sends you to the academy, that's known as being sponsored. Um, that would be uh, a cost to the agency and not to you. If you are going to self-sponsor uh, and pay for yourself. The cost for attending the police academy is $2,716.44 for Florida residents. You have additional charges uh, for you to pay for, uh, for example, your fingerprints as part of your background in order to get in. You'll be paying for that. Uh, you have to take a, a physical exam in order to get in, um, which would include an EKG. Um, and there's a, a small battery of uh, items for you to uh, complete here in order for you to, to attend. Once you are finished with the Academy successful completion, in order for you to obtain certification as a law enforcement officer, you actually have to be hired by the agency and um, sworn in and performing the duties before your certification will be activated. Once you have completed the Academy, you have four years to be hired for your certification to be activated. If you go past the four years of uh, eligibility, you have to attend the academy once more. Each coordinator at the academy is a certified law enforcement officer. It's a sergeant. Uh, we're contracted positions from several different agencies, uh, Polk County Sheriff's Office, Lakeland Police Department, and Winter Haven Police Department. Uh, we have coordinators here who are responsible for each class. So each academy class will have a coordinator from one of those agencies um, 
taken care of that class throughout its entirety. I think I can just pass it on now back to you, Chris, because uh, everything else I'm sure will come in the question session. Thank you so much. And I'll be the last presenter. Um, my name is Chris Shea. I am a sergeant who um, works for the Polk County Sheriff's Office, but my duties are here at Polk State College and I am the program director over the associates, bachelors and a certificate program we just started in public safety management. So I've been employed with the Sheriff's Office now for 27 years and I've been at the college for 13 years. So today I wanted to take some time to discuss with you um, Polk State College's criminal justice degree program. So you just heard from Sergeant Falgren, who went over the um, law enforcement and corrections academy we have at Polk State. So basically Polk State, if you're interested in um, criminal justice is your one stop shop um, because we have an associate's degree, a bachelor's degree, and you can attend the academy here. So um, when you all think of criminal justice, I am sure the first thing that comes to your mind is police officers, deputy sheriffs, law enforcement as a whole. But I want to take time to point out that the criminal justice system is in fact a, this three prong system. And yes, law enforcement is definitely one part of that system, but there are other two parts to the criminal justice system and those are the corrections and the court system. So this three prong system, as you can see, the criminal justice system needs all three of these parts in order for it to successfully work. One part of the system relies on the others. So um, let's see how this system works. So let's just say that um, you go to bed tonight and you leave your vehicle locked in your driveway. And when you wake up to go to school tomorrow, you discover that your window to your car is broken and your glove compartment has been rummaged through. So you obviously call your local law enforcement agency, such as the Sheriff's Office, Lakeland Police Department, Bartow PD, wherever you live. And so the first stage in the criminal justice system is that a suspect commits a crime, whether this be a property crime, like the one I just described to you, whether it's a person's crime, you get um, punched in the face, uh, robbed, or whether it's a drug crime, the first stage is that the suspect commits the crime. So the officer arrives at your um, house to take the report on the burglary to your vehicle. And while he or she is there, they start walking around the neighborhood and they start knocking on doors and they're going to talk to your neighbors. And that officer learns that a neighbor saw um, a local, let's just call it a thug or a known criminal to that officer. The neighbor says, hey, we saw Bobby Joe was walking around um, my neighbor's car and I saw it around 2 a.m. So that officer then goes, speaks to Bobby Joe and Bobby Joe admits to breaking into your car. So the second stage in the criminal justice system is that suspect is then arrested. So Bobby Joe is arrested for burglary and he's taken to the jail. So the crime has already had involvements now with two parts of that criminal justice system, the law enforcement part, and now the corrections part because Bobby Joe's going to jail. Now, most likely Bobby Joe will receive bail of some sort and will be released until his court date. So once he has his court date, he will have the opportunity to stand in front of a judge, possibly a jury, depending on that court case. And he's gonna be prosecuted by a state attorney um, or district in some areas, they call them district, district attorneys, but here in our county, um, they are prosecuted by a state attorney and Bobby Joe is going to be defended by either a private defense attorney that he pays for, or he's going to be assigned defense counsel um, by the public defender's office. So now you see that 
we're in now the third prong of that criminal justice system, the court system. So Bobby Joe's found guilty. Um, he confessed to the crime and he receives as his punishment probation. And now he must be monitored by a probation officer. Again, the criminal justice or the system is involved and it's now back to that cor corrections prong. So it's now involved again because the corrections prong takes, um, it involves jail, prison, or community corrections, which would be probation in this um, scenario. So without one of these entities in place, the criminal justice system would fall apart. So without that court system, the accused person, Bobby Joe, would not have an opportunity to defend himself. And without the jail, or in this case, the probation officer, suspects would run the streets with no punishment whatsoever. So there's a lot of careers in criminal justice, and I wanted to make sure that I pointed out that there's those three prongs of the system. So when you think of criminal justice, you shouldn't just think about law enforcement. You should think about all of these other careers that you could do. So you can see on this slide, there's many other careers. Many of them are behind the scenes, not necessarily um, what I refer to as a gun-toting law enforcement officer where you actually have to put hands on a suspect or where you're not actually working within the jail dealing hands-on with suspects. There's a lot of behind the scenes. Uh, again, without all of these behind the scenes people working an example, a property evidence clerk, without that person working behind the scenes, taking in the evidence of the fingerprints that were dusted off your car when your car was burglarized, they have to take that property in, categorize it, keep a uh, chain of custody. Without that person, the trial would be null and void. So these are the degree program options here at Polk State. So if you're interested in starting a career in criminal justice, we have the first step is the Associates of Science and Criminal Justice Technology. You can take that degree and go get a job. Should you wish to be promoted um, or receive some kind of title such as sergeant or lieutenant, or if you want to become a supervisor, you're going to need to go on and get a bachelor's of science in criminal justice. And then we also now have and just started an advanced technical certificate in public safety management. So what should you expect if you decide that you wanna to come to Polk State and get your criminal justice degree? So the coursework is gonna be manageable. We're not saying that it can't be tedious, but you can definitely work a full-time job and come to school here. Most of our students at Polk State College Obviously, we're transient students because we don't have a dorm room opportunity at Polk State, but most of them are working full time jobs. So we have scheduling that's flexible. We have both of our degrees can be taken completely online. We have daytime classes and nighttime classes, so you can choose the right schedule for you. We only hire professors who walk the walk and talk the talk. So we're not going to have some professor that stood in front of you that is talking about criminal justice and they haven't actually worked in the field. They will have worked in the field and they understand when things come up. They will be able to bring that boring textbook information that we all hate to life because they're going to be able to relate it to real life cases, real life scenarios, war stories, if you want to say, um, and so it's going to make it a lot more interesting. Why choose Polk State? So as I just mentioned, everything can be taken online. That's very attractive, especially if you're having to work a full-time job. We do have a fast track option. So we have semesters that are only eight weeks. Traditionally, you think about a semester in college, it normally runs, the current semester we're in would normally run January to May but we have um, semesters that run January to March and then March to May. So you could be a full-time student. A full-time student is four college classes and only really be taking two at a time, two from January to March and two from March to May. As I just mentioned, all of our criminal justice courses are taught by practitioners. Our tuition is below state rates. 
So we're very affordable. We have very small class sizes. If you were to choose to go to a large university like the University of Florida, you may be sitting in a class pre-COVID um, with 500 students or more. We have around 20 to 30 students in a classroom here. So we have small class sizes, which gives you as students a more um, individualized and more contact with your professor. We are starting to move away from textbooks. Um, I don't know if you're aware of it or not, but some textbooks run two to $300 a piece. Um, we're really trying to move our classes to where the information is provided to you electronically for free. So this is again, money in your pocket. This is my contact information. So should you have any questions after today's presentation, if you want to take a screenshot of this and send me an email or give me a phone call, I'm happy to answer any um, questions after. So this concludes our part of the presentation, Polk State's part of the presentation. And we're going to open the presentation up for any questions at this point. So he would like to know if it would be uh, beneficial if he wants to go into the police academy, would it be beneficial to have the EMS and the fire training? The only place that that would actually be beneficial is if you were going to be applying at a public safety department. And public safety departments, they actually hire the officer to do the law enforcement component, firefighting, and EMS. If they wanted to go into uh, get their EMS or some kind of certification in that regard prior to the academy, that would be beneficial. But in the uh, academy, we have ba we have basic first aid that they get put through. That's one of our high liabilities. I would also recommend uh, that they start with a degree program, especially if you're right out of high school. So you cannot go to the academy or be employed as a law enforcement officer until you're at least 19 years of age in the state of Florida. Many agencies are actually moving to not hire people until they're over 21. Got it. Thank you. He had one more question for you. Has it been more beneficial for students to do these programs online? The bachelors, have you seen more success with them doing it online as opposed to in person? It takes a special student to be able to complete their degree program online. It's super convenient. Obviously, you're able to do it on your schedule when you want to. You could do it at 2 a.m. and you could do it after a shift, you could do it in between work, etc. However, you have to be self motivated to do an online class. So a lot of students um, don't find that they're able to to really uh, be self motivated. It's not a lot of interaction with a professor. So if you really need um, that lecture component, or you really need the interaction, I would suggest that you go um, to to college face to face. A lot of times the learning occurs from the students around you. A lot of times they bring up things that you learn something from. And the war stories other students bring to class sticks in your mind and could save your life. Uh, I would say law enforcement, fire and EMS, and probably um, Homeland Security and probably HAZMAT, those kind of courses almost need the traditional classroom to, and nursing probably needs a traditional classroom to get the full benefit from it. Uh, we had a meeting not too long ago with the other directors and there's actually been EMTs that have graduated without ever touching a patient. Absolutely. And, and that's the first time they're touching a patient is the first time they, they, go, they, they go to work. Obviously there's training involved, but that's not the environment that you would wanna start by seeing your first patient. Thank you so much. We do take National Registry EMR exam for the, uh, for the prerequisite for EMR, but we don't accept the international exam for EMR. And as far as looking for a four-year degree bachelor's for EMS, uh, currently, no, we are not. One of the reasons is right now we do have a bachelor's degree in public administration and there's a concentration in public safety management. Um, it doesn't look like there's any further questions. We certainly appreciate you guys spending your morning with us. Uh, feel free to reach out to any of us if you have any questions about our program. Um, we certainly are here to serve you and help you, and we look forward to working with each and every one of your students if they choose Polk State.